Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the histology of the cervix of the uterus. Before going to the histology, we like to find out the female internal sex organ. Here is the image of female internal sex organ. This is the uterus, fundus of the uterus. This is the body of the uterus. This is the cervix of the uterus. Today we will discuss about the histology of the cervix uteri, this part. The cervix of the uterus is in the lower part of the uterus. The mucosa of the cervix of the uterus is continuous with the mucosa of the body of the uterus. And the mucosa of the cervical canal is continued with that of the epithelium of the vagina, but the the epithelium changes from columnar epithelium to stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so this is the cervix of the uterus. It extends from the internal os, the junction between the cervix with that of the body of the uterus, and the external os where the cervix is open into the vagina. Two part, one is the endocervix and the protruded part in the vagina is the ectocervix. So we will study this histology here. This is the mucosa, the lining epithelium mucosa. Then we will get the glands here, glands. And this is the wall of the cervix of the uterus. Okay. So, what are the identifying points? Identifying points are the endocervix is lined by simple columnar epithelium. This is the simple columnar epithelium is here. Simple columnar epithelium. Epithelium changes abruptly at the lower part of the cervical canal. Here, there is the stratified squamous epithelium. There is some abrupt change here from the columnar epithelium to stratified squamous epithelium. This junction between the columnar epithelium and the stratified squamous epithelium, this level goes up as the age advances. This specimen is taken from the menopausal women. In a young lady, the junction is a bit lower. The junction between the columnar epithelium and the stratified squamous epithelium of the vagina. Okay, so this is the ectocervix area. This is the this is the external os, and through the external os, this is continuous with that of the vagina. The vaginal epithelium is stratified squamous non cutaneous epithelium that extend here, and in this specimen in the postmenopausal woman, the junction between the Stratified squamous epithelium and the columnar epithelium is at this level, but it may be a bit lower in, an, in the young ladies. The epithelium changes abruptly. The endocervix has branched tubular mucous gland. These are the glands, cervical gland. That gland has many functions, especially for lubrication of the vagina. And also this cervical gland secretion changes during menstrual cycle before ovulation or at ovulation it is very much thin and it it permit the passage of semen to go to the body of the uterus in the in the luteal phase or the the or the second half of the menstrual cycle the mucosa become thick so the spermatozoa or the infection cannot get in there the wall of the cervix is consists of dense collagenous connective tissue. Here we have dense collagenous connective tissue contains a lot of collagen fiber, a lot of elastic fiber, and muscle fibers. The muscle fibers are less than that of the uterus. There is continued from the uterine body 
So this is thicker but contain more collagenous fibers. Okay, during parturition or during childbirth, what happened? Due to the secretion of relaxin hormone from the corpus luteum, the collagen fiber will be will be dissolute a lot. And so an elastic fiber will be prominent, so the baby can come out easily. Okay, so this is dense collagenous connective tissue containing elastic fiber and smooth muscle fiber. The number of smooth muscle fiber is less. Okay, so here, if you go here, here we are looking at the histology of the cervix, and here we are all looking at the stratified squamous epithelium of the ectocervix that is continuous with that of the vaginal epithelium. This is stratified squamous epithelium, non keratinized epithelium, and we have also sub epithelial papilla. We are seeing there sub epithelial papilla of connective tissue here. Okay, it goes there. This is the epithelium. We have basal layer. Then from the basal layer, there will be the other layer will be developed as the cell goes up. The nucleus will be very much attenuated, and this will be very squamous at the surface, and it will come out. Okay, this is the squamo-columnar junction. This is the columnar epithelium. This is present throughout the the cavity of the cervical canal and close to the external os it changes to become stratified squamous epithelium this is stratified squamous epithelium this is columnar epithelium this is an abrupt change we have to know that the cervical mucosa does not slough out during menstruation okay there is no sloughing out of the cervical mucosa there will be minor changes happen during the menstrual cycle of the cervical mucosa and also the mucosa here on the ectocervix that does not go through changes so there is no sloughing there we have a lot of gland cervical gland they are branch tubular gland their secretion is mucus and sometimes the gland may be may be blocked the duct may be blocked and we may get the nabotian cyst these are the due to the retention of mucus here and the outlet is blocked we may get nabotian cyst okay we got that and this is the stratified squamous epithelium this is present below the squamo columnar junction this is squama cell stratified squamous non keratinous epithelium this is columnar epithelium this is the junction it has some clinical importance this is a site of the cancer formation this is a common site of cancer formation and it is an it is usually a squamous cell carcinoma okay so this is another image here we are looking at this image here this is the endocervix but we are we are seeing some of the cell has been changed into the squamous epithelial cell here okay this is a change this is the stratified squamous epithelial cell it should be lined by the simple columnar epithelium like this or like this simple columnar epithelium but here we are seeing multi layered epithelium. These are the stratified squamous epithelium. There is some metaplastic change happen. Metaplasia is the conversion of one cell type to another cell type. Okay, this may happen due to exposure to sexually transmitted disease or human papilloma virus or having multiple partner. People may have this type of metaplasia. It is initially reversible but it may be transported into carcinoma in situ, may eventually to the invasive carcinoma. This is the stroma of the wall of the cervix, which is composed of collagen fiber and few muscle fiber, a lot of elastic fiber, and it is rich in blood vessels and lymphatics and nerves.
and the nerve supply is autonomic nerve supply not somatic in the cervical region okay we got that now histology of the cervix mucosa of the cervical canal this is columnar epithelium cervical gland here these are blood these are branch tubular glands they are obliquely placed they, this is lamina propria for the glands here this is composed of fibrous tissue collagen and elastic fiber with few muscle fibers and there may be cyst formation here in the glands okay so this is the the epithelial junction we got the junction here this is the stratifers commas epithelium this is the columnar epithelium okay so we got that columnar epithelium and stratifers commas epithelium multi-layered epithelium one layer columnar epithelial cell this is the junction okay this is exfoliative cytology this is done in pap smear uh, and it is stained with the hematoxylin orange and eosin and we'll get different color of the epithelial cell this is a normal picture there is no cancer here because all the cells are same size nucleus is very much pycnotic because it is superficial cell nucleus is very much attenuated this is the picture of the of the cell on the surface of the stratifers commas epithelium color should be different because of different amount of keratin this is the the endothelial mucosa uh, endosurgis mucosa lined by the columnar epithelium okay lamina propria is here this is the mucosa here there is some mucus secretion here and a lot of inflammatory cell maybe the neutrophil maybe a few lymphocyte here it is also present in the those inflammatory cell are also present in the lamina propria okay so we got that. So we have some biobiopsy question here. What are the identifying point? We have the lining epithelium. That is the simple columnar epithelium at the squamous columnar junction. It will be converted into stratified squamous non keratinous epithelium. That is usually in the lower part, close to the external os but its level may go up as the age advances especially in the menopause in our sample we got the lining epithelium of the cervical canal and the cervical gland is also lined by columnar epithelium what type of glands are present found in the cervix these are mucous secreting gland they are lined by the columnar glandular epithelium and they are branch tubular glands what are the changes occur in the cervix menstrual cycle okay so the secretion of the cervical gland will be very much thin at ovulation that will permit the spermatozoa to get up in after the ovulation then the the cervical secretion will be thicker gradually because of the action of the progesterone how the cervix differ from the body of the uterus cervix has more fibrocellular element a lot of collagen fiber less muscle fiber a lot of elastic fiber why the epithelial cell color varies in exploitative cytology because of different amount of keratin there does the squamocolumnar transformation lines the changes with ages yes it goes up it goes up as the age advances what is the Papani clue technique it is the technique by which the cell from the cervical region is taken out and it is tested on the microscope to see any type of abnormality any type of abnormal cells what type of carcinoma may occur in the cervix it is usually just the squamous cell carcinoma initially it is carcinoma in situ when it does not penetrate the basement membrane then eventually if it is not treated it may lead to invasive carcinoma what are the changes happen in the cervix during parturition that the, by the action of the relaxin hormone 
there is a luteal hormone the collagen fiber will be will be lysed or destroyed and the elastic fiber will be prominent so the baby can can negotiate through the cervical canal okay these are my references and that's all about the histology of the cervix if you have any question please feel free to ask me and please support my channel please subscribe me and have a nice day bye now